I'm afraid to say I love you. I'm afraid to say I love you because it feels like I'm starting a timer to a bomb which will leave us both dead. I'm afraid to say I love you because it feels like every time I say it, it loses resonance. Like that timer gets faster and faster. I'm afraid to say I love you because I'm not sure I know what love is. The love I've had has neither been everlasting or unconditional. The love I've had has made me feel like I'm unlovable. It's made me feel like I'm a liability, that I'm too much to handle, that I don't deserve love because I'm emotional. The love I've had has made me feel like a monster because I have this angry in me that I pray every day will go away, and it never does. I'm afraid to say I love you, because what if this monster hurts you the way I was hurt? I'm afraid to say I love you, because I do love you. But look at how I keep the I and the love you separate. Like somehow if I keep that I out, I'm only committed 66%. And so I'm relieved of any emotional responsibility because I don't want to hurt you. Because I know what happens when love for someone turns into hatred for yourself. I know what it's like to wake up in the morning and the first thing you think is, what did I do wrong? And to try your best not to look into the mirror. Because you'll ask yourself, Maybe they left me because I'm so fucking ugly. To be afraid of certain songs, cause certain songs don't sound like music anymore, but they're memories that feel like a needle being jammed through your eardrum. I know when love goes wrong. I don't want it for you. I don't want it for me. And these are the things I mean to say when I say I'm fine. When you ask if I'm okay. I'm pretty fucking far from okay. That's why I'm afraid to say I love you. Mama worked late last night. The hairdresser was not free. So this morning I sit between Mama's thighs as she plaits my hair in cornrows. Row by row, I cry each time a plait is completed. Not from pain, oh no. Our scalps were carved for this. I cry from shame. Shame for each row plaited on my head. Fear of the stairs, stairs, stairs that the silky girls would give to me when they see my rows of corn. If I could go back and hold myself, I would whisper into my young ear, don't worry, it's beauty. All of it is beautiful. I would sit myself down and hold myself close to say, don't ever be ashamed. Hold your head high. Claim what is yours before it's too late. For they will laugh now, 
and steal later. So my phone died, and then five minutes later my computer died. So I spent the next three hours looking for my charger like a maniac. But no matter what I did, or how hard I looked, or how loud I cried, I couldn't fucking find it. Which meant that my batteries would stay dead, and I wouldn't be able to do literally anything, which sucked because I had work to do and an important email to send and I'd been planning to watch the last episode of Game of Thrones. But whatever, I'll just keep pacing back and forth and back and forth because... I don't know, maybe there's a lesson to be learned here, although I really couldn't fucking fathom what it was, and as I was clenching my teeth to keep from screaming, that's when the sun came up and blinded me and my heart hit the floor because it dawned on me that the world, unlike my own small pathetic life, doesn't run on batteries. And the sun will shine, and trees will grow, and rivers will flow, and elephant babies will be born day after day and year after year without any chargers without any batteries or SIM cards or data plans and how magical that is and it clicked. Happiness really does grow on trees and the path is actually so simple but I'm never gonna get there. I'm never gonna find it because instead I found my charger and I plugged it in without a moment's hesitation and began the process of forgetting all about the beautiful, enchanting, infinite world outside but who am I to judge? Because who made me king? In any way, if I'm being brazen, who made me human? The law be good, till it ain't good no mo. The law be God given and state sanctioned. Uh, Concrete as commandments handed to Moses, yet wet for fingers of wicked kings to alter to their liking. Shape shifting depending which hand holds pen. Don't let it be written. Either inscribing pathways toward protection for poor, or damning death marks for death row murderers whose hands be bound with no blood. Though man may reflect on past transgressions, repent with purest heart intentions, positively transforming personhood and passions, the law loses plenty of profit if they pity prisoners by design. The law be unforgivable. Extending grace to those who bear white face. Even if crimes committed were dark as skin of those commonly incarcerated in innocence, both judge and jury stain fingertips with homicide, haul human to hog pin and call the act of Jesus. Because the law of land is loose. It used to tighten noose, use power to abuse, teach children within school that law was always good. Preach its inerrancy to the young and ignorant, mixing truth and lies in order to persuade youth and eyes that you and I get euthanized. Accused for crime, follow suit and tie, crucified, dehumanized. Are you surprised? The law must justify how they make a killing before they make a killing. The law be worshipped by beige bodies, who sing praises over rice to pack shoddies. Ride through Bible Belt, catch bullets and catch bodies. The law be church for countrymen who kill for law. Beat crews, break wounds for law. Mob down middle of the streets with torches for law. Break down door of violent horses for law. Go low, train, spray, but betray by law because the law be good. Till it ain't good no mo. When I was 19, I didn't sleep for two weeks and had a seizure, fell down and hit my head and that is two decapitations right in a row and my head came clean off twice and cracked like a frozen lake and all my childhood memories fell through the ice and drowned in a water so cold and deep. It grabs you by the spine and shakes the language off of you like autumn leaves. I have a memory disorder now. Prosopagnosia. Facial blindness. Faces don't get stored in my memory and so everyone is a stranger. 
and for a long time. I didn't know what deep, dark lake this loneliness crawled out of. Sometimes, I'll be writing in my notebook and look up and see someone staring at me, like I was the one staring at them. And then they'll copy my movements and I'll realize that I'm looking in a mirror and the stranger is me. This is the alone disease. It is impossible to recognize the people who have loved me or who I have loved. I can only see someone by looking at them so when they are gone, they're gone, gone. And it's just me, who I also don't remember or recognize. And the cracks grow wider and they grow deeper and they grow arms and legs and fingers and claws and a hunger for something they cannot swallow. I've learned to recognize people by their voices. I can hear a laugh in a crowd and know that you are there. I can play a song in my head and hear your voice singing it. Remembering your face is like catching the wind, but I can hear your voice being carried by it. And that hurts far worse than any flavor of forgetting. Loss is just loneliness with a master's degree. This shattered ice memory is only skilled in remembering all the ways I have been hurt. I am writing in my notebook, and I look up, and someone is staring at me. I think they know me. It isn't a mirror this time. This person could be anyone. It could be you. The wind blows, and I try to catch it. 